Okay, so Pi News episode 28, and I'm going to do this on my Raspberry Pi 400 for a change. I've just received my Raspi key, which is an eMMC drive for the Raspberry Pi, and uh, that should be faster than an SD card, but also more stable. Anyway, let's switch over to screen capture. Okay, so first up from Reddit is uh, this MacBook Pi. Uh, and it says here from an old A1181, which is older than the Mac I use. So I, my Mac is a 2010, uh, which is this one, and I use it for my Windows 10 videos. I've also done loads of videos on it. It's a brilliant machine and uh, certainly still serviceable at the moment as is. But if it stopped working, then maybe I'd consider something like this project. So let's go back to the Reddit post. Uh, so you can see here uh, there's a nice Raspberry Pi logo on the back. If we uh, have a look at some of the other photos... Uh, you can see it's running Raspberry Pi OS. would look nicer with Twister, especially with the Mac OS theme. So let's flick through. And what I like about this is there are some uh, images from inside, uh, and this is always nice to see. So if we go a bit closer to this one, so you can see there's an SD card extender in there. There's a USB, some sort of USB output here as well. You can see the uh, SD card slot is still usable, but through the CD slot, Go a bit closer to this one. So it's using the battery compartment to put the Pi in and it's USB-C, so it's a Raspberry Pi 4. And this is a great view. And it's using one of these monitor adapters so, so you can get uh, various different things to use your laptop display uh, as an HDMI device. But you can see also here there's USB ports inside. There's all sorts going on here. There's a battery here, it looks like. Another view from inside. And there's details in the comments. Uh, I'll always put a link to this in the description, so have a look in there if you want to know more about this. But you can see here, you can buy third-party controller boards to almost any LCD panel. You have to open it and check the product number. Next up, now I've never had an Argon case. I keep thinking I should get one, uh, and people do definitely rate them. Uh, especially the M.2 uh, variants that they do. But this is adding USB 3 ports to it, which I thought was a nice touch. Obviously it looks very, very neat. And if we click on, you can see it's using one of these USB A to A uh, like extenders to be able to connect those. So it's using one of the USB 3 sockets to connect to the four ports. Uh, but what that means, I guess, is it's got no extra power. So it would be, it would depend what you could use with that. Uh, certainly you wouldn't want to be plugging in multiple drives, um, but it's nice to see and uh, maybe a variant where this was separately powered uh, would be even better. But I realise there's not a lot of room inside these cases, um, but yeah, really nice work. Very, very neat. Always like a few close-ups. Next up, another video from Tupman Uh I covered this, I think in the last Pi News, about a Twister OS case. Uh, it's got even better. Uh, it keeps the, the amount of detail that these videos go into, so it's definitely worth looking at. But there's uh, all these bits of plastic and everything redirect the air, uh, and it's got like a, an airflow, and also there's more vents been added, but definitely worth watching the video. Uh, I'll show one, there's one image where uh, the Twister OS logo is kind of showing through the plastic, and it does look really nice. Yeah, you can see in this one, so the Twister logo on the side and the front, uh, which I definitely appreciate. Next up, I've covered Jam Hamster before and several of the builds, and I particularly like the one in a cassette. And these are all based on games consoles and uh, retro gaming. So you can see things with discs, a USB hub, uh, a joystick adapter, a Pi 3 handheld. Uh, so really, really nice uh, and definitely worth checking out. Uh, if I flick through, there's also a bit more detail. I quite like this picture because it shows them all together. And it looks very nice on the on the orange there. So it all, all sort of offsets it and looks really, really impressive. And I saw this uh, on Reddit as well. Uh, why don't we have more games on the Raspberry Pi? Uh, now, obviously, we've got loads of um, games have been ported and uh, PC games, Linux games. Emulation is amazing on the Raspberry Pi, but native games, not as many. Um, and uh, so I was just looking through the story and seeing what people had said. Yeah, really interesting comment here uh, by FarpTR. Raspberry Pi already tried to run an official app store, but barely anybody used it, so it was closed down. Uh, and if you click on it, it does have a story on the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and it's from 2012, yeah, December 2012. 
so uh, it was something. So it's not available now, um, but it was it was interesting that it was uh, an approach that they were doing. Uh, and you can see there's free content on there, but there was also some paid content on there as well. If we flick down, storm in a teacup looks interesting. I wonder what happens if I try and do it now. Uh, we've got add remove uh, in Raspberry Pi OS, and also that's available in Twister as well. But uh, it isn't it isn't the best experience uh, when we're used to you know things like the Play Store and the Apple App Store and things like that. But uh, yeah, let's let's try this anyway. What's it going to do? Unable to locate package. Okay, so it's obviously not on there anymore. And there are so many comments in here. Uh, and if I go right down to the end. Have I got an end button on there? Yeah, so if I do function and the right arrow key, yeah, right to the end. It says here, even in 2013, uh, Blitz Games is insolvent and no longer an active business. So it looks like uh, the intentions were there, but it never really carried on. Um, but the one that Raspberry Pi OS uses, uh, the add remove software, so that would be, or if I type in add, Add remove software. I find this experience, and obviously Twister has, um, I think, changed some of these icons and things to make it look a bit better. Um, but uh, when you look at games, uh, it's a really, it's not, it's not a great experience to go through. But at least you know that the games and the apps that are within this work. Whereas some other app stores that you try. Uh, they just don't work because they're more designed for x86 and not ARM processors. So at least pretty much everything you try in here. So yes, you have got to uh, filter through it. It'd be really nice if it had images, uh, reviews, just just basics on there. Um, but uh, but it's something. But obviously we do have things like in Twister OS we have things like PyKiss and PyApps, which aim to sort of help with this and at least are giving us access to more content. So if I do PyKiss. In some ways, this makes a better job of it, uh, and certainly there's more content on here. So there's all sorts of things on here, and also recently I've reported this before, but things like Half-Life, GTA. I think the Pi does really well for games now. There are loads of great games that run really well on here, loads and loads of content, um, but also we have Pi apps as well. So if I type that in, and under games, we have uh, several more things in there as well, and it keeps getting added to. I don't know if we necessarily do need a dedicated Pi Games App Store because the community is so big and uh, there are so many people working on different projects and things like Pi Apps and Pi Kiss make it so much easier to find. And last up, thanks to AE's Tech Lab, uh, that was the first person who let me know that Twister OS has an update and uh, so I'm going to update it now. So if we look at the change log, so version 2.02. .02, so what we got here, so fixed VNC server support, fixed support for connecting to SMB shares in Thunar, updated Discord app, updated Twister 10 theme icons, added updated Twister OS wallpaper. So great work. It's lovely to see this project is getting regular updates all the time and uh, some of them are amazing updates and add all sorts of things to it. So let's update mine. Uh, the, my icons are up in the corner here because I've been messing around with Wine, uh, which is being able to run Windows apps on Linux. And uh, one of the programs I did wanted to do a screen check, and after the screen check it did this. But I haven't changed it back or played around with it, but maybe the update will do that anyway. So let's... And that is definitely one of the strong things about Twister is the fact that Box86 and Wine is uh, updated regularly, and you don't have to do anything to it. There you go, so see update and install. Okay, so that's all finished, so let's reboot. Okay, so we're back in. Um, and yeah, one of the things I was um, I was gonna do in today's video, and uh, that a few Pi News things came up, so I figured I'd do Pi News. But uh, I've been playing around with Wine and uh, Windows apps and things like that, and I figured, because uh, I've just done a Windows 10 video, and I thought I'll maybe try some of the apps, because I haven't really tried apps, Windows apps, on Linux before. Uh, and so if I go to my USB stick, so I've got uh, things in here. So things like uh, this Parkdale, which is a speed checker for like SD cards, and it's a Windows program, but if I double click it, it automatically recognizes it as a Windows program and actually does launch it within Linux. 
Now, not everything works in the same way as this, and I've done a separate video on games with Box86 and, and Wine, and there's all sorts of things in there, but you can see that it does actually launch, and uh, you, know, you can flick through the drives, and uh, it seems to have the functionality you'd have on a Windows device. So that functionality seems to be built in already, because if you, if you clicked on that on a normal like Raspberry Pi OS, nothing would happen. But because it's got Box86 and Wine on it, it does seem to work. Uh, but also, I've put in here some downloads. So I've downloaded some programs, and you can see the icons come up as if they were on Windows. And uh, I haven't really tried to install any of these, but say something like this image resizer. So this is a Windows program. It's not designed for Linux. Uh, but if I open up Wine, so you can see I've got Wine Desktop. And we go down to Start, Control Panel, Add Remove Programs. And if we go to Install, and we go to the folder that it's in. So if I go to home pi, and we go to my computer, and uh, my USB stick is the Z drive on this one, and if I go to media, pi, and this is my USB stick, so I've got access to all that's on there. Uh, so Win Windows 10 downloads this folder, so these are the ones that I've put in here. Just have a play around with, uh, and say I pick this image resizer. I'll do, do others in a different video. So you can see it's opened up the installer, English, let's say OK. And uh, I really haven't looked. I looked at a few tutorials and they all had sort of different information on them. So I didn't find one that necessarily worked for this version of Wine with the Pi. Um, but So I figured I'd just have a play around with it and see what would work. And as you can see, it seems to be installing as if it's installing into a Windows device. So I wonder if it creates, oh, something's going on. Oh, so it's launched the, uh, the web browser. So this is um, for the app that was there. Uh, so let's minimize that. So launch ice cream image resizer. Let's hit finish. I could probably close that bit down. Yeah, it looks like it's loading all right. There we go. So if I do add image, I don't know what images I've got. Um, on here, so if I do my computer, I'm just getting used to it. It's very much like using Windows 95 or something like that. So if I click on Z uh, and media again, Pi, so this is my USB stick. Have I got any images on there? I haven't, so I'm going to put an image on there. Um, so let's, uh, what have I got? Is there anything in my pictures folder. Oh yeah, so let's hit copy. And I'm going to put that on the USB stick. There's there's other ways I can do this, but I know where the USB stick is now. So let's close that down. Is that going to, am I going to have to go back and forward? Yeah, there we go. Look, bubbles, JPEG, open. So this is a Windows app working within Linux. Uh, and I did, I did a little bit of research on this, and Wine was um, from the early days of Linux, uh, and a lot of uh, businesses wanted certain programs to work, uh, otherwise they couldn't use Linux. So Wine allows you to run Windows programs uh, within Linux. So if there's a program you want to be able to use, but you want the stability and the speed of Linux, then this is a nice option. So let's click on it. So what shall I resize it to? So let's do, let's just do 640 by 480 maybe, because that'll be a 1920 by 1080. You can see it on the on the left hand screen there. Uh, let's hit resize. Are you sure? Are you sure you want to resize? Resize. All your images are successfully resized and saved to your chosen folder. So open folder. Is it going to be able to find? It's there. Look, bubbles. Mini bubbles. <laughs> Uh, so 24 kilobytes, so it's made it a tiny file. So where's that put? Oh, it saved it where saved it in the same location. So this is on uh, my USB stick. So if I was to do, uh, well, let's go back into Linux. So let's go to the USB stick. And here you can see mini bubbles. So if I open with image viewer, yeah, so there's my 640 by 480. So even though it says 853 by 480, so it must be something to do with the screen ratio. Yeah, of course, because 640 by 480 would have been 
more four by three rather than 16 by nine ratio. So that makes sense. So it looks like it picked uh, one option anyway. Um, but yeah, really, really impressed with that. And I need to play around with that more. But let me know in the comments what you've had working with Wine, if there's any programs that you specifically use, because sometimes people say, why do you want to run Windows programs? Well, in some cases, there are a is a program that you can't get on Linux or another platform. And uh, I know it's got a lot better and there are amazing alternatives on Linux. Um, but, uh, but it's just nice to have the option to be able to do all of it. And Twister OS comes with this built in. So I haven't done, had to do any configuration at all. Anyway, I'll cover this more in another video, but I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.